Congress hereby declares, one, its firm intention to provide all necessary support for members of the armed forces of the United States fighting in Vietnam. Two, its support of efforts being made by the President of the United States. The President was not in the Clark uh, Second Resolution. And other men of goodwill throughout the world to prevent an expansion of the war in Vietnam and to bring that conflict to an end through a negotiated settlement which will preserve the honor of the United States protect the vital interests of the country and allow the people of South Vietnam to determine the affairs of that nation in their own way. And three, in support of the Geneva Accords of 54, and urges the convening of that conference or any other meeting of nations similarly involved and interested as soon as possible for the purpose of formulating plans for bringing the conflict to an honorable conclusion in accordance with the principles of those accords. You have said every one of those things. Yeah. Is that it? That's it. Now, what's going to be your argument? Just say that... Uh, uh, rather than declare war, we just uh, substitute this? Uh, that's right. The other argument goes too far. It infringes upon the executive. It uh, uh, has a lot of loopholes in it, and uh, uh, we're uh, up uh, facing a, uh, an accomplished fact, and we have to go through with it. Uh, we cannot withdraw. We will not withdraw. Uh, we'll continue our efforts, and uh, this is it. What we want to do now out there, I talked to you, I think, about this once before, and then I'll be through. I'm giving serious thought. I've got to meet with them sometime, or six months is about up, and we're trying to get Key to come on and have an election as quickly as we can after the Constitution comes in. Uh, Lodge will be moving out. He can't stay. We've got to move him somewhere else. We are thinking seriously of making uh, Westmoreland who has the leadership qualities and the respect of everybody with whom he's ever dealt, and particularly our aid people and particularly our state people and the military people, giving him overall command. Uh, he just wears a uniform, and he'll be our number one man in Vietnam until uh, they uh, have their presidential election and get a man elected. He'll replace Lodge, in effect, and replace Westmoreland, in effect. But we'll have under him the men that we expect to, to develop, the younger men, Abrams, who would be chief of staff of the Army here if he stayed here. But we won't send him out there to try to see if we can't to put a new touch on our pacification and get a new uh, approach to try to try to uh, get this country, South Vietnam, uh, back on its feet. We're going to make a desperate effort to move Sullivan out of Laos in there to uh, 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 take Porter's job, uh, Porter's tired, and probably move Bob Comer out to do work on the uh, on the other side of the war, the pacification schools and hospitals. And then we're going to make one desperate pitch, if we can, to get uh, Ellsworth Bunker to go there as ambassador at large to work to really be the the. Uh, the midwife, uh, like he did with the Dominican Republic, to try to get the civilian election held, to try to get see it its fair, to try to get the generals to have a civilian viewpoint and uh, understand that that's more important to have a good election than it is to win a big battle, and yeah. to try to guide him like he did. Uh, he's uh, in perfect health now. He feels good. He's as younger than I am, but he does have 72 years old. But I looked last night, I was talking to Mac Monday, he said, well, General Stimson, or Secretary Stimson came down here, sec the greatest Secretary of War at 73 and stayed five years, and this fellow ought to have to stay over five months in this transition period, and we, we've got Westmoreland there, so if something happened to the older man, he got a little senile or something, we wouldn't be caught. At the same time, we think he has enough stature and enough, uh, enough respect of the whole world, and, certainly Westmoreland would respect him enough that he would, in effect, be the political man and the diplomatic man, and uh, we'd just use Westmoreland's stars to keep Key in line, and we are doing that, and doing it pretty effectively since uh, Honolulu. We made him go with the Constituent Assembly, and then Westmoreland's worked his heart out, and we've got him going now with the presidential election. He's agreed to move it up four or five months, and I want to get your reaction to that. It sounds like it has a possibility. I'd sort of like to think it through, Mr. Bell. All right. I don't know that he'll do it. The weakness is 
Uh, I don't know whether Westmoreland will want to take on a little more responsibility. It's kind of supervised the other. We think we need to do that because of its position there. I don't know that Bunker would want to work under somebody, you see, uh, as an older man, but uh, uh, he is not familiar with all these things in the pitfall out right. there, but he, he, he has an approach that nobody in the government has. He's always been a good soldier, too. That's right. He does it. That's right. He just goes where the ball is, and it's going around the end. He'll go there. If it goes through the line, he goes. And he doesn't seem to pick up any barnacles or hurt anybody's feelings, or he doesn't get in any fights. Most of the State Department people have got problems, but he yeah. doesn't seem to get any. Yeah. Think it over. Say nothing about it. I'm thinking it over this weekend. I'm going to send for him and see if I can talk him into it. But... Uh, got to do something, and I got to find something for Lodge. I don't know where I put him. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mr. President, I'll do that. Thank you, sir.